we know from reading your book and from history that you were with um, Papa Oshofa the last few days before he transitioned. Could you just tell us a bit about that? Um, like I said just before, we were in Ikorodu when Papa came in. And when he came in, like he usually comes into the church, you know, he, he was a very humble man. And he's always been humbled by the presence of God. Yeah. When he enters the church, he will enter, walk humbly. He, ne he never rushes. Yeah. When he came that day, he just put his hand behind him. His head bent. Walked into the church. Baba um, Bada was preaching. He has already started when my father walked in. And Baba Dabada stepped down and said, Papa, please come and do the preaching. And Papa said, no. Baba Dabada said then, they discussed among the two of them. And Papa took the microphone from him and said, Oni wasuwa oni ni supreme. I was lucky I was there. So... Ba, 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 da, uh, he then, when he comes in, he will first of all go to his seat, pray, and then come out. Then this little drama happened, and Baba ba, ba, continued the sermon. When he finished, Papa then prayed for the congregation. Then he wanted to go out. There was this lady that was rolling. When Papa passes here, the lady will roll. When Papa moves to the other side, the lady will, you know, she was in a trance, rolling, trying to block him. And Papa just said, Emma Jadai Sholu Aduro, she just did his son like this. Emma Jadai Sholu Aduro, but to me, mm. it was just, he wanted to go, he wanted to go. So a few minutes after he left, we didn't know he was involved in an accident. We continued the, mm. the, service, the, uh, the harvest service, till the end actually. So when the service was finished, I then drove to Ketu to see my father because he has asked whether I was coming to Ibadan and I said no, that I'd see him. So when I got there, he wasn't back. I walked back, got into my car, was driving out, when one of his driver, Leon, stopped me. Auntie, 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 Papa had had an accident. Thomas and Mark are dead. We don't know where Papa is. I turned around. My aim, because I left Baba Bada at Ikorodu, my aim was to go and meet Baba Bada to tell him there's a problem. Papa has been involved in an accident. Thomas and Mark are dead. By the time I got there, Baba Bada has left. But I met Baba Adifeso. So I said, Baba Adifeso, there's a problem. Leon has just told me Papa was involved in an accident. So Baba Adifeso said, wait. He was, when he left us, because it was Baba Adifeso's parish, when he left us, he was going to Ibadan. So let us go and look for him in Ibadan. Park your car. So I left my car. We got into Baba Adifeso's car with his driver. We went to Ibadan. We went to Army Barracks. We went to all the hospitals. I went to all the mortuaries in Ibadan, all the hospitals. Like we were checking everywhere. Nobody knew where my father was. We didn't go back to Lagos till about 10 o'clock at night. Me and Baba Adifeso. Because when I get to the hospital, I just say, if you don't give me your book of entries for that day, I will not leave the hospital. I'll sit down on the floor. <laughs> they were forced to give me the books. I checked, there was nothing like a chauffeur. In the hospitals, at the mortuaries, we checked everywhere. We went to the parishes from uh, Army Barracks Road. We couldn't get anything. So we then decided to come to Lagos. I was just saying, God, if you can let this man survive, I will thank you. God, don't let this man die just like this. I need to see him. When we got to Ketu, I was told that my father was upstairs. Wow. That was a miracle. <laughs> you know, I didn't believe it. I ran upstairs at night. Papa was truly there sitting down. And there were so many people around him. And then I said, what has happened? Then this doctor, you know, Papa has so many children. This doctor will come, prescribe this. 
this doctor will come pre at about 11 o'clock I said okay let me go and buy an exercise book so that whoever comes <laughs> will write down his prescription so that the next doctor will know what has been done we were at it till midnight this man has not slept people kept coming the people that loved him that were concerned about him so I called my father I said Papa I need to take you back to the hospital Papa looked up at me and smiled and said, I didn't know that Baba Jane Koko took Papa to Labi Hospital and Papa refused to stay. That was why he was brought home. He got all the first aid and everything, but he refused to stay. So when Papa looked at me and smiled and said, I didn't me, I went down to Baba Bada and said, Papa took back when Molly Brown lost the hospital and taking him to the hospital. But I said, no, I don't believe you because Baba Jan Koko took him to the hospital and refused. He said he didn't want to stay in hospital. Papa will not go. I went to Baba Ajan Koko. Baba Jan Koko said, but it was me that took him to the hospital. He will not go. My husband was away. I was on my own in the house. I even forgot that I left my son on the road when I heard that Papa had an accident himself and the nanny. I left them. I just started traveling. He will not go. So I was in a dilemma. Who do I call? Papa has agreed to go to the hospital. My aim was to take him somewhere where he can have a rest. Because, you know, an accident that two, person, two people died instantly must be a very serious accident. And this man has not slept. As I was walking back to go back to Papa upstairs. I just met um, Honorary Evangelist Adinego and his wife, Le Superior Elder Sister Adinego. They were very close children of Papa. And I said, Mama Adinego, Baba Adinego, Papa has agreed to go to the hospital, but nobody believes me. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So they said, don't worry. We'll arrange an ambulance for you. Then I became like a robot. I said, if you want to bring an ambulance, make sure the ambulance doesn't have a name i started mm -hmm. giving instructions you know as if it wasn't me mm. you know i was just giving instruction make sure there was no name because when we move him tomorrow morning i don't want people to know where he is he needs the rest that was my intention that was how i got to look after him the last 10 days of mm. his life i just moved him out hoping that he will rest so on Wednesday, I moved him out in the morning at 9 o'clock on, on Monday. He had the accident on the 1st. I moved it out on the 2nd, Monday, the 2nd of September, 1985. On Wednesday, Papa got up and said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to I said, Papa, 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 hey, she learning but you go your mama and maybe she. Papa said, Hey, dear, feel it, but she will. Later, he will then give me another instruction. And this is this. Eh, what about me? Pay over some jaw. Papa, I should take a deal. Can't talk about some jaw. You know, he was just sending me to, although after the, his transition, I went to meet all these people. And they did all the things Papa wanted them to do, you know. And he was the one that told me that Timban Loli, Mama Yani, Ketu, ma confie sekonde imeko, ma lo simini, ma fe sekonde abekuta, ma lo simini meko. He traced the last journey for me, and that was what we used for his burial. The burial Papa cannot be buried, but the body. Mm. for the burial of the body. All the things he said those last few days, when I remember, I said, God, this man was just giving me instructions on what to do. He gave us so many. I was with my brother Ebenezer. It was only the two of us looking after him, at least for the first seven days. Nobody saw him, by the grace of God. And then he requested to see them the following Sunday. Friday night, he told us, to go and call some elders for him because he wanted to do Thanksgiving service with them. So I said, Papa, 
she I want trustee lefeki. But Papa said me in Royal C trustee. Then he started giving me the names of the people and I had small diary. I started writing all the names down. And by the grace of God, we were able to contact all those people. And they came for the last service with him at the hospital the Sunday morning, the 8th of September, 1985. They did service and everything. It all went well. And then on the on Tuesday, the 10th of September, he gave up the ghost. And that was how he went. We were lucky that we were with him till the last day. So I took the body to the mortuary. And because Bada, Baba Bada was, um, when he gave up, my brother wasn't yet there because I was living in Ilukoju. We took him to Ilukoju. Um, when my brother came, I told him to go, I mean, my brother Ebenezer or chauffeur, to go and tell the elders of the public church that Papa wanted to see them because we couldn't, we didn't want everybody to know at that stage. So my brother went and they all came. And before they came, there was this woman. She was an Elijah. And um, I've taken her to my father before for prayers because she was married for over 10 years. She hasn't had an issue. She's a friend of mine. So on Thursday before Papa's transition, Papa has asked me whether she had a child now. And I said, Papa, not yet. And Papa said, call her for me to come. And I went to this lady that same day, and the lady said, my, um, my husband wants me to do this and that and that, so she couldn't come. And the day of the transition, when Papa gave up, you know, when you live with people like SBG or chauffeur, you know what to do when somebody dies. You know how to handle <coughs> our rights, the celestial rights. I started doing all those. So I needed candles, I bought candles, I needed incense, I needed coal. Um, coal. So I went to a parish in Ilukweju. When the man saw me, he said, ah, you are my father's daughter. He started chatting. I said, I'm not here to talk to you. I want <laughs> incense. I want to buy incense. So he gave me a lot of incense. He didn't collect the money. Now I stood there and I said, I need coal now. My mind just went to my friend. She was living in Bagada. So I went to her and I said, I met her, her husband. And I said, Papa has just given up. I need coal to do the celestial right. Papa has, she just got up herself and her husband. They were the first people after the hospital staff to see Papa's corpse. When the woman got to the hospital, she knelt down in, in front of Papa's body and shook Papa and said, Papa, is it now that you say you want to give me a baby that you are going? That month, she got pregnant. She was jumping up and down. I'm now pregnant. She <laughs> lost the pregnancy. The following month, she got pregnant. The baby is now, uh, she, she gave birth the baby, to the baby in 1986. Mm. The baby has gone to study in America. Beautiful girl. And she's now working with a radio station oh. in Nigeria. Very popular girl. Wow. to the glory of God. Amen. So, there are so many miracles that we have witnessed that God has performed. That's the main reason why I wrote this book. For the world to realize that God is truly living in this, our church. And God is truly manifesting himself in this, our church. If only we can trust him and believe in him. Amen. Thank you so much.